Guys, things are looking incredibly bullish for Ethereum. The Ethereum 2.0 launch was a huge success, and I'm super excited to watch everything happen as ETH2 fully rolls out. But in this video, I want to talk about some specific technical changes that are happening to the Ethereum protocol that are incredibly bullish. You know, they could have an impact on the price of Ether. And the best part is we don't have to wait for ETH2.0 to fully roll out before these things uh, can take into effect. And I want to explain this as a blockchain developer who works with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis. But don't worry, you don't have to be a developer in order to watch this video. I'm going to make this as simple as possible. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then I can show you how to do that. Just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So things are looking incredibly bullish for Ethereum right now. So, you know, it's the number two market cap cryptocurrency at the time of recording this video. It's the blockchain with the most users on it. And we just seen the arrival of Ethereum 2.0, or at least the very beginning of the Ethereum 2.0 rollout, okay? This has been a long anticipated event because it gets the blockchain ready for prime time so that it can support lots of users and be really fast, really scalable, all that kind of stuff. This is the Ethereum that we've been promised for a long time, and it's here, at least the beginning of it's here. So Ethereum 2.0 is gonna roll out multiple phases, right? So we are at phase zero, which successfully launched at the beginning of December in 2020. This is gonna be a long transition, so we're not going to see all of Ethereum turn on instantly, but there are some things right now that are incredibly bullish. So I'm explain what those things are. So first and foremost is staking, because that's what's going to happen right now in Ethereum phase zero. You can move your ETH from uh, Ethereum 1.0 to Ethereum 2.0 and start earning passive income that way. And so that's a big benefit uh, that we can get right now. And that's not the entire point of this video. I'm going to get to that in a second. But let me explain why staking is such a big deal and why it could have an impact on the Ethereum price. So basically, uh, Ethereum is migrating from proof of work to proof of stake. That means instead of mining, it's going to move to staking. So if you've heard of a Bitcoin miner, that's where basically someone participates in the blockchain and they run a mining node. They just turn mining on and they earn a passive income reward for, you know, securing the blockchain. But proof of stake is different. All right. So proof of stake is where you run a node, but you stake your Ether, your Ethereum cryptocurrency to your node in order to participate in validating the transactions on the network. So uh, you might understand what staking is already. That's okay. I just want to explain that for the newcomers uh, who are brand new. We've seen lots of people, you know, rush into this space as the Ethereum price has gone up like crazy in the past few months. So I just want to make that clear. That's what staking is. Basically, you take your cryptocurrency, you lock it up in your node, and you earn a passive income reward for doing that. And at the time of recording this video, uh, you know, it's been successfully launched and you can earn, I'll see here, about 15% uh, APR on your ETH. And that's a huge value proposition because you, know, you can lock it up. And if the price of Ether goes up, that's just icing on the cake, especially if you're holding ETH for the long term. ETH is bullish because there's so many applications built on top of it. The more users, the more people want to hold ETH, right? And then staking is bullish because it locks up a certain supply of Ether. People have moved their ETH from Ethereum 1.0 to Ethereum 2.0 it's totally locked up, all right? So if you're thinking about staking, you need to know that because basically, uh, if you want to stake right now, you have to move to the Beacon chain. That's a separate network, Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum 1.0, you have to move to that. And so this 975,000 Ether, uh, it's locked up and it's not in circulation anymore. And so what do you think that does to the price of Ether potentially, all right? So it's basically supply and demand economics. So if more people want to buy ETH, if, if it's bullish because there's so much adoption of ETH already, there's so many applications, and then a bunch of it's locked up in staking and can't come back right now, well, then that means effectively the supply of ETH is reduced, or at least the available supply that you can purchase. And so that's what's happening to the supply of Ether right now with staking, okay? So basically, uh, it's shrinking effectively because people are moving into the network, they're staking it, they can't get it back right now. And let's say the demand continues to go up because of all the adoption that's happening on Ethereum right now. People just say, hey, I want to invest in this cryptocurrency for the long term. And if we truly are in the macro bull run that everyone thinks that we're in, then the demand is going up like this. All right. So if the supply is going down like this and the demand is going up like this, just by basic supply and demand economics, that means that the price increases. So that's an incredibly bullish outlook for Ethereum based on, you know, the Ethereum 2.0 launch that's just happened. Again, that creates a ton of hype that creates creates some excitement that increases the demand and the supply is going down because people are staking it. And, you know, if you can, if you watch here on the website on launchpad.ethereum.org, you can watch this progress. You know, more and more people are starting to stake. Of course, the rewards are going down because they're doing that. But I think a lot of people are staking now 
after the network has launched because there's less risk, right? A bunch of people who uh, decided to stake before, basically they were risking thinking that the network launch was going to be successful. And now that the network actually is successfully launched, that means probably more and more people are, are willing to make the jump, you know, start staking their cryptocurrency. And, you know, more and more companies are going to come out with staking as a service so that you don't have to run your own validator node. So all those things are incredibly bullish. That means that more people are going to be willing to stake because they see it works. More companies are going to come into the space and offer that service. And more and more ETH is going to get locked up. And this problem is just going to get bigger and bigger. It's not really a problem, right? It's only a problem if you want to buy ETH and it's too expensive. Now I want to talk about another thing that's incredibly bullish. And we don't have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 to fully ship before we get this benefit. And this is something else that's also going to affect the supply of Ether. Okay, so if the demand keeps going up and the supply keeps going down, then it's going to have an additional impact on the price. So let me talk about what this is and why it's going to affect the supply of Ether. So there's a big change to start burning ETH uh, when new transactions are created on the Ethereum network. So let me explain what that means and why that's so important. So this is something called EIP-1559. So don't freak out if that's like a technical word that scares you. Okay, I'm going to explain what that is. But effectively, what's going to happen is when new transactions are created on the Ethereum network, some of the ETH in that transaction is going to get burned or destroyed forever. Okay, so this is a proposal that's designed to improve Ethereum transactions that can happen on Ethereum 1.0 right now. We don't have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 uh, to ship completely before we can get this benefit. So let me explain what it does. Basically, this is a change that can go into the Ethereum protocol that will burn some of the ETH in the transaction uh, whenever that happens. So let me explain how this works. So imagine that you're going to send cryptocurrency on the Ethereum network. You're just going to send Ether, the native cryptocurrency on the Ethereum blockchain. Let's say you hold some Ether in a MetaMask wallet, for example. So let's say I send cryptocurrency to you. Well, whenever I do that, I have to pay a small gas fee. Okay, so gas. Basically, if I want to send you one ETH, I additionally have to pay some more Ether to make that transaction go through. So I pay like one ETH plus a little bit extra. And right now on Ethereum 1.0, uh, that fee goes to the miners. Okay, They're the ones that are running the blockchain. They're using their computational resources. They mine the transaction and they're compensated for doing that. But also part of this reward is the mining fee. So new Ether is created in this process. So the miners get rewarded from mining fees, but also the small amount of Ether that you pay in that transaction. And so you can see a summary of the gas prices here. Like, uh, what if you want to send a transaction right now, it's 28 guay, which is a really tiny amount of Ether, all right? So part of EIP-1559 is designed to help improve some of these gas prices. And what it does is whenever you uh, send that transaction, some of that ETH is burned. So let's say you pay like, you know, 50 guay to send a transaction. Well, part of that 50 guay just, just gets erased completely from the block chain. And you can think about it like a network fee. So basically, uh, it benefits everybody who holds Ethereum right now. So essentially, if you ever use Ethereum, if you send transactions, then any of that, some of that gas fee that you send is going to get erased from the blockchain entirely. That's what EIP 1559 does. All right. It's to, an attempt to help improve, you know, this problem. And it can happen in Ethereum 1.0. You have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 to ship completely before it rolls out. Why is this mega bullish for Ethereum? Well, it's going back to this supply and demand problem. So basically, if more people want to hold Ethereum and then more people are using it and sending transactions, then some of that ETH is going to get burned in that process and it's going to reduce the total supply of ETH. So that you know increases this problem where the supply goes, you know, down and down and down, and the demand is potentially, you know, going up, like I said, you know, if the bull trend keeps up. Quick point of clarification. You might say, like, oh hey, but you said when ETH is mined, that new ETH is created. That's, that's true. All right. So the supply of ETH is increasing whenever new ETH is mined, but uh, burning the ETH will still slow the rate that new ETH is created. So instead of like, you know, a uh, supply curve looking like this or something, it'll be much more shallow. Okay. So that means that yes, new ETH will be produced, but it'll be produced at a slower rate. So there will still be less ETH circulating uh, for people who want to buy ETH. And so the, the supply will be lower. If the demand goes up, that means the price goes up. And so both of these things together, you know, the EIP-1559 proposal that still has to be passed, let me be clear about that, this hasn't happened yet. So that 
plus the ETH that's being migrated to ETH2 for proof of stake that can't be taken out right now. Both of these things together are incredibly bullish for Ethereum because of basic supply and demand economics. And people talk about this being like a supply side crisis where people want to buy ETH, but there's no ETH to buy, right? Um, that's the whole idea. Now, that being said, it's not like a majority of ETH is doing this, right? Not like all the ETH is going to evaporate, but it still could have a impact on the price of Ether, right? So as always, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy Ether, I'm not telling you to risk your life savings on this kind of thing uh, because of this, but this is incredibly bullish for the network and the asset of Ethereum and potentially the price you know, in the future, assuming that people still demand Ether, which I think they will because of everything that's going on right now. All right, so that's my bullish outlook on Ethereum in the short, mid to long term, all right? So I hope you like this video. As always, smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. That really helps these videos out so that more people can you know, learn about blockchain. And if you like this video and you want to become a blockchain developer, then how can you do that? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, you know, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, you know, I can show you to master blockchain step by step from start to finish over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Teach you how to build a real world project so that you can, you know, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, build your own app. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers. You can see any of the uh, student success stories on my YouTube homepage as well. All right. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.